Okay, so this is red zone number nine. It's about two-way tables. I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to go over two-way tables, and then I'm just going to go through the questions from the assignment. So a two-way table is a way of displaying statistics, usually survey answers, something like that. And it's called the two-way tables because it usually is involving two separate categories, and you can read it in two different ways. Here's an example of a two-way table. So you can see that there are two categories. The category uh, that I'm hovering over now is gender. And the category at the top is what is your favorite sport to watch on television. And then there's all these numbers in a two-way table. There's a couple of important things that you need to know for two-way tables. And the first is just how to read this. So I'm just going to ask a couple of very simple look at the table questions. And you should just think of the answer. So if I asked you how many females like to watch basketball on television, what would the answer be? Well, I come over here and I look and I see it says females. So females is this whole row right here. And then I go to basketball and basketball is this whole column. And the box where they intersect is right here. So there are 16 females who like to watch basketball. Uh, if I asked how many total people like to watch football? Well, this bottom column says total, and the bottom row, I'm sorry, and the column right here says football, and I can see that where they intersect, it says 52. So 52 total people like to watch football. Um, what if I asked how many people took this survey? Is that number here? Now, a lot of you will remember back from the unit to always look in the bottom right corner and 60 would be the total, but that doesn't make sense. The total would have to be when you add up these three totals. So 52 plus 38 plus 60 is 150. So there's actually 150 total people that they surveyed here. So that's something, sometimes you have to add the, the rows and columns to figure out the total. Now, here's another two-way table. And it's the same question, it's just they, they switch the order, so just be careful here. In, uh, instead of football, basketball, baseball, they went baseball, basketball, football, but it's the same exact thing. And you can see that they gave us all the totals already. So how many total people were in this survey to the right? And the answer for that would be 100, because you see it says total, total, and where they meet is 100. So 100 people were surveyed over here. Now. Why did I show two of these? The reason I showed two is because we need to go over a main topic called relative frequency, not to be confused with regular frequency. So let's talk about the difference between those two things right now. So the definition for frequency, just regular frequency, is the number of times an event occurs. Make it smaller so it fits right here. So those numbers that we were answering a minute ago, 52 people like football, 16 females like basketball, that's just frequency. That's the number of people, the number of females, the number of males. Relative frequency is something different. Relative frequency is how many times an event occurs if the total was 100 meaning you take how many times it occurred and you divide it by 100 and that would give you the relative frequency. In other words, the relative frequency is the percentage that an event occurs. So the frequency, which you probably heard that word before, is just the number of times it occurs. So if I flip a coin 10 times and it lands on heads six times, that's the frequency, six. But the relative frequency would be turning that into a percentage. So six out of 10 would equal 60%. And now relative frequency can be written as a percent, which I just talked about, which is, could be written as a fraction or a decimal. And you've learned over the past few years how to change numbers from percents to fractions to decimals. If that's not something you are comfortable with, you need to become more comfortable with it because that is in a lot of topics that you're gonna cover in high school math. And so if you're not comfortable just converting numbers, 
percents to fractions to decimals in any of those orders, you really want to brush up on that skill. Okay, so before we jump right back into two-way tables, I just want to do an example of the difference between frequency versus relative frequency. Uh, so you could see here, I flipped a coin a total of 16 times, and these were the results of when I flipped it. So remember that frequency is just the number of times that something happened. So how many times did I land on heads? One, two, three, four, five, six. So the frequency of landing on heads was six, and which means the frequency of landing on tails, I don't even need to count it. I can just trust that it's 10. Relative frequency would be turning these numbers into percentages. So to do that, it's always the frequency over the total. And then on your calculator or in your head, if you're really quick, depending on what the numbers are, you turn that into a decimal or a percentage. It comes out to 37.5% or as a decimal 0.375. And if I want to leave it as a fraction, 6 over 16, I can. I just need to simplify it to 3 over 8. So that's the difference between frequency and relative frequency. In this example, the frequency of landing on the heads was 6. The relative frequency was 37.5%. Now for tails, remember it's just that number, the frequency, over the total, 10 over 16. And I know that it's going to be 62.5% or as a decimal 0.625 as a simplified fraction five over eight. So 62.5% of the time it landed on tails, that is relative frequency. 10 times it landed on tails, that's just regular frequency. So you can always think of frequency as just counting and relative frequency is always frequency over total. I think that's a good thing to write down. Relative frequency equals frequency over total. And then you can take this and turn it into a percent, a fraction, or a decimal. Okay, back to the two-way table that we were talking about on the first slide. So the reason we use relative frequency is sure, I can look at this table on the left and say that 40 males like to watch football. And I can look at this table on the right, and but that says 20 males like to, watch, uh, like to watch football. But why are those numbers so different? So can I assume that in this left one, way more males like to watch football? It's tough because they have a different total. This total is 150, this total is 100. So let, I'm just going to look at this one example. I'm going to turn these numbers into relative frequency. So the relative frequency of males who like to watch football. And remember that relative frequency is frequency over total. So in this left table, that would be 40 over 150. And if I turn that into a percentage on my calculator, it's not perfect, but it's 26.6 repeating percent, or as a simplified fraction, four over 15. And then on this table to the right, males who like to watch football is 20, over the total, which is 100, and that is 20% or 2 over 10 or 0 0.2. So you can actually see the percentages are pretty close, 26 versus 20. But 40 compared to 20 looks very different. That's why when you compare statistics in any topic, whether you're a psychologist doing a study or you're a pharmaceutical company testing a new vaccine, you need to use percentages, relative frequency, in order to do these comparisons. All right, let's jump into these questions. Number one, a newspaper conducted a survey to find out how many high school students play video games. The two-way table below displays the data. So you can see they split it up by gender, boys, girls, and then play video games, do not play video games. 
based on these data in the table, which statement is true? There were 2,451 boys surveyed. That is true, boys total 2,451. And about 29% of them play video games. The key there is this question, well, this choice is only looking at the number of boys. So when I write down the total, I have to write down 2,451. And it says play video games. So I look in the table and I see 1,593 of them play video games. Now using, not even doing quick math, I know that 1,593 is more than half of 2,451. If I'm, I'm just like rounding and estimating. So this 29% number cannot be correct. If you wanna do the math out on a calculator, that's great too. If you wanna get that exact number, it comes out to about, so I'm gonna use the approximately symbol, about 65%, so that's wrong. So I look at the next choice, and it says there were 2,996 girls, that's true. And about 45% of them play video games. So play video games, 1,361 girls play video games, and there's a total of 2,996 girls. And since these numbers are a little closer together, I'm just gonna do it on my calculator to make my life easier. And I see that it comes out to about 45.4%. So that is the correct answer. Okay, a school club had a t-shirt sale to raise money. After the sale, an inventory showed that 108 blue shirts, I'm gonna write it down to organize my information here. Uh, 108 blue shirts, 96 green. Uh, the sizes of these t-shirts include 60 small. Let me change color up here. 60 small. 86 medium and 58 large. And you just have to pick which one it has the correct information. So let's just look at the first one, 108 blue. Well, blue is this first row right here. If I add up those numbers, 60 plus 86 plus 58, that does not add up to 108, it's way too big, so that's wrong. So I look at the second table, 34 plus 46 plus 28, that equals 108. So we're good on blue. Let me add the green. 26 plus 40 plus 30 is 96, so we're good there. So now we have to look at the other category. Small is supposed to be 60. 34 plus 26 is 60. Uh, there's supposed to be 86 medium, 46 plus 40. And there's supposed to be 58 large. There are, choice B is our answer. Okay, in this question, uh, the first thing we need to do is fill in the missing information. We can see that the two categories shown are whether they uh, play a sport or don't play a sport, and if they're on the honor roll and not an honor roll. So I guess this table is trying to see whether being on the honor roll or whether playing a sport has anything to do with being on the honor roll or not. So let's find out. So to fill in the missing information, if you're looking for a missing part, like in this box, when they give you the total, you're gonna to use subtraction because we know that this number plus this missing number has to equal the 365. And that's basically how we're gonna do this whole thing. When you're looking for a total, all you have to do is add. So once we know this number, if I add them together, that'll give me the total. So let's start by, uh, whoops. There we go. Let's start in this top row where it says, on the honor roll, do not play a sport. 365 minus 250 is 115. Uh, the next number I can figure out is this total down here. So all I have to do is add the 115 and the 30, and I get 145. Uh, I can find out this box by using subtraction. 440 minus 365 is 75. I can use subtraction to figure out this missing box. 75 minus 30 is. 45, 250 plus 45 is 295. And just to check, 295 plus 145 is 440. So we did it correctly. Now we have to answer these questions. So 
it looks like we're finding relative frequency in each question. So remember that relative frequency is frequency, which is a number, over total. The main thing you have to be careful of is the total. Are they talking about every single student or are they only talking about one of the categories? So let's look at B. Out of all the students, find the relative frequency of students who are not on the honor roll and play a sport. So right away, it says out of all the students. So we know that the total is that 440 number. So that's going to go on the bottom. And they want to know about students who are not on the honor roll and play a sport. So I look at the chart, the chart, and this middle row here is not on the honor roll. And this first column is play a sport. So there's 45 kids who are not on the honor roll and play a sport. I could leave my answer like that. It's not simplified, but it's not technically wrong. Or I can turn it into a percentage, and it's approximately 10.2%. So out of all the students, approximately 10.2% of the students are not on the honor roll and play a sport. So I look at part C, I'm going to do it in blue to make it easier. Out of all the students, so again, it clearly says out of all the students, so the total is 440. Find the relative frequency of students who do not play a sport. So I look at it, and I look at the column that says do not play a sport. It doesn't say anything about honor roll, not on the honor roll, so I just skip all the way to the bottom to the total, and I get 145. And I turn that into a percentage, 145 divided by 440. It's approximately 33%. It rounds to 33.0%. It was 32.95. So the 5 rounded the 9 up, the 9 rounded the 2 up. And then D, if I change it to green, out of all of the students, so I can stop reading right there for a second, and I know that we're only, we're using all of them, so that's 440. Find a relative frequency of students who are not on the honor roll. Not on the honor roll, this middle row, it doesn't say anything about a sport, so I just look at the total, which is 75. I turn that into a percentage, 75 out of 440 is approximately 17.0%. All right, on to the, I believe, last question. Nope, two more. So this and one more. This one, they filled in the entire table, so that's nice. We need to find the relative percent. It's another way of saying relative frequency of all the students who are not active after school. So remember that relative frequency is frequency or the number over the total. So we have to figure out the total, and they do not give it to me. So I can figure out the total by adding up all of these numbers. And when I do that, I get 186. So 186 is the total. If you want, you could add up each row and column, 77. 49, 60, uh, 57, 87, 93, 69 plus 89, 93, and 93, 93 is 186. You could add up everything if you wanted to add in where they usually give you, they usually give you that total column and total row. So if you wanted to, you could have added that in. So they wanted students who are not active after school. Hmm. Not active. Oh, that's, I guess, in a matter of opinion. So I'm, I'm assuming they playing sports is active. Playing video games and doing homework. I'm guessing they're considering both of those not active. So we'll go with that. So 49 plus 60 is 109. Turn that into a percentage. And it's approximately 58.6%. Remember, you can leave your answer as a fraction. You would just have to simplify it. Or you could leave an answer as a 
decimal as long as you convert and round correctly, but this one said relative percent, so I did percentage. And this last one, we have to fill in the missing information. So right away, I see the total in the bottom right-hand corner is 180, and the total number of drama club members is 110, meaning the missing number is 70. Similarly, down here, computer club, there are 80, so not in the computer club, must be 100. And now we can fill in this missing number. So 110 drama club members, and out of those, 15 are in the computer club, meaning that 95 are not in the computer club. And then 95 plus 5 is 100, 15 plus 65 is 80. And oh, that's it. I guess there's no relative frequency question that goes along with this one. So that's it, that's two-way tables. The main things, just make sure that you can read them correctly, you can find the totals, you can find the relative frequencies, and you can convert your numbers. Reach out to your teachers if you have questions, uh, look up some videos on YouTube, on Google, do, do something to help yourself so that when you do get to high school math, whatever it is that you're taking, it's a little easier than it would be. All right, have a good day, stay safe. Safe, stay active.